Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro, the COVID-19 edition. Uh, I know a lot of you folks actually have been watching because Shelby Marshall told me, but if you haven't, um, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm at my day job. I'm an elder law attorney. I actually work at Myrick O'Connell. There are 20 of us right here in Westboro. We're actually in Westboro. Um, as well as other places, but this isn't my day job. This uh, this is this show is all about not elder law. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. If you ever see me do a presentation, you always hear me talk about Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. In their goal in life now during COVID is to not die, you know, because they know that they're the people who are the most at risk of anybody else. But we should have more conversations about that in the future. But in the meantime. Shelby and I had had in, everyone knows Shelby Marshall, so I don't have to introduce her very much. She, <laughs> she and I decided to do these shows weekly just so that we could keep you really up to date during these last several months. And I think a lot of people have found that useful and have all and have as a result of that really come to appreciate the incredible value provided here by Westboro Cable. And so Shelby got a great mystery guest for us today. One of those, you know, those Wizard of Odd people, you know, behind the screen, right? Of course, Aiden Horns, Oregon uh, is that the real person producer behind it. But but Karen Henderson is here. And Shelby, you're going to talk to her a little bit about that. So let's, yeah. what, what do we want to talk about? And well, thank you, Karen. It's great to see. Yes. Yeah, so Thanks our guests much. today, we're going to do a two part series, folks. So if you like what you see today, you'll definitely want to tune into our show next week. And if you don't, well, you should tune in anyway. Um, but our guest today is Karen Henderson, who's the general manager of Westboro TV. And um, Arthur and I have talked for a long time about, you know, our our knowledge, our understanding, our awareness of how important um, public access television is to every community, um, but how it's become um, and playing a much bigger role. Uh, in this pandemic. And we'll talk with Karen about that as we sort of go through this show in the next. Um, but wanted Karen to come on and talk to us, um, I guess, first of all, about who she is, who is Karen Henderson. And, um, and then we'll talk a little bit about what is, you know, local cable TV, because I think a lot of folks don't quite understand that. They think, the town owns the TV station, you know, how much does it really cost us? So let's get into some of those things. So Karen, welcome. You're a familiar face to many, but for those who may not know you, please, a little bit of background. That's great. All right. Thanks so much, Shelby. And, um, and thanks for the big stipend you're paying me to be on the show. You know, when you're a big star, you get you get the big bucks to be on the well, show. I hope um, you like the makeup artist and all the <laughs> other. So wait, um, so wait a minute. How about a round of applause? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank That's you. great. That's great. Um, and the makeup artist, uh, Shelby, we we had to cut with the COVID uh, cuts that we've experienced. So uh, that's why you get this. Um, but seriously, so I'm, my name is Karen Henderson, and I am the general manager here at Westboro TV. Uh, a little bit about my background. I moved to town 25 years ago, which is just crazy to say, because that's a long time now, um, and lived in town um, for a long time. My husband's actually from town, and uh, we had some kids right about now with the uh, uh, everybody being home and in the house, there are four teenagers in my household. So that has been um, interesting. Yes, yes, that. Um, but yeah, no, love them. But um, they're all at home now. And I got involved in Westboro. Um, I, I worked quite a bit um, just in my, my private life. I worked at an HR and benefits consulting firm doing a lot of communication and education at that job. So um, and way back before that, I wanted to be a teacher. That that didn't um, that didn't come to be. I uh, they weren't hiring a lot of teachers, so I got onto a private kind of corporate uh, track, and that stuck. But I did communication and training and all at that um, HR and benefits consulting firm, and then I got involved in Westboro. I really wanted to get involved in the town, and kind of took you know what value could I add, and having a little bit of that education background, uh, there was an opening on the school committee, and. Um, it was, it was great actually, because um, I got asked by one of the selectmen was calling me about another issue and, or I called her and left a message and she called me back and I asked the question and she said, oh, I'm so disappointed. We have an open seat on the school committee. And I was really hoping you'd call to ask me about that. 
And that started it. I said, huh, well, I hadn't been calling about that, but maybe. And so I ended up on that committee for a number of years, I actually was um, on the school committee for seven years um, and um, got to know and form a lot of relationships in town. So we take kind of that background, the relationships and town work along with my communication and education background. And that is how I ended up getting hired here as the general manager at Westboro TV um, because that's a lot of what we do. That was six years ago. And of course, a lot of what we do is community related education, information, entertainment. And um, that's kind of what I brought to this job. So that's how I ended up here. Great. Um, and and uh, I, I remember meeting, I remember meeting Karen just kind of wandering into her office. They were in this like little basement in, a, in one of the places off of uh, off of Route 9, right? And and, right. and I kind of wandered in and kind of like, so, you know, this is me, I'm Arthur Bergeron, you know, and I, I do elder law and stuff, you know. I, they had, she hadn't met Frank and Mary yet, right? And, <laughs> and, and, I, and she was like all pumped up. Oh, this is so exciting. This station's gonna do some great things and yada, yada, yada. And like, here we are. It's like, it's become like the big time. It's pretty amazing, pretty amazing. Awesome. So, Karen, um, tell our audience, if you would, share with them, like, how, how does this all work? So, Westboro, does Westboro, the town, own the TV station? Right. So, um, so the, it does not. So, the way it works, uh, kind of a quick um, understanding of a local access, because I think a lot of people will recognize that you can go all over the country and find local access stations. Um, and that is because if we go kind of back to uh, the Federal Communications Act, Federal Communications um, back in the FCC, back in the 80s, actually, when um, cable was becoming big, uh, they said, OK, you can locate in these towns and cities, these big cable companies and offer your cable services, you know, to use those little uh, little rabbit ears anymore on the TV because we're going to have cable now. Um, but one thing that in order to do that, when those big cable companies came in, they really wanted um local voices to still have a place um and they kind of carved out a niche for that and gave um the local so we have local authority over the cable companies that come in and they gave them the right to say you know what as the franchising authority that lets you come in here cable company we can require you to set aside channels for public education and government use and that would be locally based programming and so that was something that was passed um, by the FCC back in the 80s and has led to where we are today. And the way it works is um, the town of Westboro is the franchising authority. And we have in the town of Westboro specifically agreements with Verizon and Charter so that they can offer cable in Westboro. And one of the things that's in the contract with those um, cable companies is that they will fund our local access PEG public education government peg channels. And so with that, that's how we're funded. It's not through um, the town or taxes and Westboro TV operates as an independent nonprofit. Not all towns do it that way. Some towns have it as part of the town itself as a department, but um, the town of Westboro has um, an agreement with Westboro TV that those funds will come to our nonprofit. And the way it works is we have a board of directors and some number of those board of directors are appointed by the board of selectmen. And so our organization is run kind of in tandem with the town, but again, not as a, not as a tax department, if you will. So can I just add something to, to all of that? It, it, just so that you can put some of this into context. I, 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 I'm kind of aware of the community, of the community access environment because I'm actually on the board in Nantucket. I'm on I'm on that board, the Nantucket version of that board. And as a result became a member of, of the, the national organization for uh, the access for community. I can't remember. The, Alliance. The, the, the Alliance. Alliance for Community Media. The Alliance for Community Media, right? Uh, and as a result of that and going to one of their big regional meetings came to realize that Massachusetts is unique, right? that while the national legislation does say that as a condition of the cable station operating in the community, they have to be giving money. They don't say uh, exactly where the money has to go. They give the, actually they give states the option. State, some, Connecticut, for example, all money comes to the state of Connecticut and then the state of Connecticut parcels it out. In many states, it goes directly to the community, but there is no federal requirement that the community use a dime of that money to actually do community access television. 
and many states don't. So in most states, there are very few community access stations. We are the only state where almost every community, I want to say 340 or something out of 351, has community access. And the reason for that is that there was state legislation that said specifically as to the money that the towns get, the communities get, right? They have to be they have to be using it for community access television. And so some communities like Nantucket, it, it is, oh, let's see. No, Nantucket actually it's also a 501c3 like you are. Um, and some actually maintain it as a town department, but it, it but it has to be, and we're unique that way. And so in terms of the evolution of community access media, we're way ahead of almost every place because of that. Really important. You know, one Arthur, usually you bring amazing uh, comic Tri relief. Uh, and <laughs> But today you are just on fire with the information. Thank you. Wow. I love this. I love community media. I, as, as I know you, you do. I know you do. And you're very- Me you're, too. <laughs> I know. Good thing. So, so Karen, um, there was actually just to uh, maybe tie the bow on this a little bit. There was um, a recently a uh, an article on the town warrant uh, regarding um, the the TV station. Can you tell folks, kind of to Arthur's point in terms of funding, what what the purpose of that was? Right. So, um, so they've changed a little bit of how they want um, the towns accounting for their local access funding. And that, and to Arthur's point, is kind of to ensure that uh, that money is going directly toward cable services, toward local community access um, stations. So even though it's, um, so they, they created a, um, uh, oh my gosh, what's it called? Revolving account? Revol yeah, it's not though. Um, it's Enterprise fund. Enterprise, Enterprise fund. Enterprise fund. Thank Sorry, thank, thank you. See, thank I can get a billion fund. of them on this. I know you're two, so good. Two today. Um, so, so it really just um, we just have to make sure that we give the monies coming in to West Pro TV. We make sure that that is tracked and given to the town so that they are aware of it, and we pass it through as a legislative body. But it it doesn't again touch the towns numbers, so to speak, because it's it's not a taxable um, event, so um, taxable department. So, but it does show up on the warrant now. That was new last year. Yeah. So last year we had two things. We had to set up an enterprise fund, and then you have to fund the enterprise fund. But of course, the by definition, that means money coming in is money going out, as opposed to being raised and appropriated at town meeting. I feel like that's like I, my personal fund. I have an enterprise fund. Money comes in and it just goes out. <laughs> It doesn't stay long. <laughs> Definitely uh, true. So, so Karen, talk to us about, you know, blend that story of pre-COVID pandemic and sort of the type of, I mean, the, the TV, the station has always brought access to certainly covering meetings, government uh, meetings, board of selectmen, planning board, and others. We'll just sort of say others. And, uh, you know, town meetings, certainly, um, uh, a member of your team, yourself included, usually has a video camera um, on hand at, you know, concerts and, um, you know, first day of school activities. So that educational piece and, and um, you know, a ton of coverage of sporting events and arts and culture um, offered through our public schools. And then um, there have been historically a variety of shows um, where you have seniors on the move and you have... Um, uh, Paul McGraw and his show, what is it, On the Sidelines? On the Sidelines, yeah. On the Sidelines, where he's blending history and guests and sports and and sort of, um, you know, giving folks an opportunity, which I, I think a lot of folks don't realize that really anyone could sort of approach the show, uh, approach the station and say, I have an idea for a show and I want to, and, and I'd like some help to produce that, which I think is fascinating. So if you want to touch on that, please do. But sure. So that's sort of where we've been, but what have you seen during this pandemic and where are we now? I mean, I'll, and before I give the, the mic back to you, I'll just say I have been amazed at the uh, station's ability to pivot and support countless um, public meetings beyond planning board and, and uh, the board of selectmen. And I know our meeting schedule has doubled or tripled um uh you're covering board of health now um but 
uh, from my view, it has really opened up the doors and really cr improved transparency as to government communications and what's being debated and being discussed. Um, and I think it's uh, really engaging the public in a very different uh, way. So take it away. Right. So I guess I'll start with um, that I'm very proud of my team. So I work here with um, my, my two constants, employees, Aiden Horrigan and Jeff Poole. Um, Aiden's been here a little bit longer than I've been here. So I think about six and a half years now. Um, and Jeff is a uh, graduate of Westboro High School and uh, joined us a couple of years ago now. Um, but we really have um, tried very hard to kind of go above and beyond what our normal course of business would be um, in order to kind of do the things that we normally do, but on a different, much different scale and just um, just kind of the, the shape of what we've been doing. So, you know, we're we're a community service organization. We are by, for, and about Westboro. That's the programming that we provide to the town. So that's always been the case. And Shelby, you hit on all the different things that we've always done, kind of, again, public education and government-wise. We kind of look at our business in those three sectors. Um, but really, uh, we're all about community. That's what we do. And about informing, educating, entertaining that community. And this time of coronavirus has been really tough on the community, right? I mean, community, common unity, bringing us all together. That's a lot of what we've been missing as a town and community is how do you all come together? So that's one place where we felt as a team, we could step up and try to, in our own way, bring the town together, um, but virtually. And so there have been a lot of government meetings, important government meetings, where the Board of Health has been and Board of Selectmen talking about all the different things going on across town that people really need to be aware of. But to be able to still have government functioning um, and make sure that the public has access to that and even going so far as to helping with um, all sorts of meetings. So normally we would cover planning board, Board of Selectmen, uh, finance committee and um, school committee. Right. Uh, but during this time, it's been sustainability, master plan, um, a municipal building committee. I mean, all sorts of different groups who wanted to come together and want to make sure that the public, because they don't really have in-person access, how do we make sure that we're transparent with the town? Uh, so there've been a lot of government meetings. Uh, another thing that we really focused on was Memorial Day. Again, that's a time when the community comes together. It's very important to people and they, they couldn't come together this year. And so we spent a lot of time doing individual pieces so that we could pull together a Memorial Day virtual service, which I was really proud of the team on this one. I had so many people commenting on how they couldn't believe how touched they were by that video and how you know we had scenes of Westboro and the faces that they knew, and we just had to do that in a way that was socially distant and safe and that people were comfortable with as we went around and tried to film the different pieces. Uh, but there must've been 30 something different groups that participated in that. So again, trying to bring the community together in a time when, when we can't be together. Um, religious services, we've done a lot of religious services. That's been another thing that's been huge for people. And not just online. I mean, I think it's important, Arthur and I have talked about this a lot, but we've been able to bring that to TV. And there are a lot of people who either can't get online, um, aren't quite sure how to get online, even if they have access, or just don't want to watch um, a video or a religious service, you know, standing at a computer somewhere or sitting at their desk. They'd rather be on their couch in their living room, their family room. Um, and so we've kind of enabled that with our stations as well. And kind of quickly, I'll, I'll name two more things quickly that we worked on. Um, but the senior class for this year for schools um, didn't have a lot of the typical things that they have at the end of their 13 years here in the Westboro schools. And we, again, really ran around to try to bring those together and work with the schools on having their Mr. WHS that they have that we made sure was out and live every single night. I couldn't tell you the number of calls we were getting for people who wanted to tune in, families that were tuning in together, um, people that were 
you know, showing it on big projectors outside so their um, their kids could have a friend or two over and be sitting socially distant. Um, baccalaureate, uh, the parade that they had, award ceremony. I mean, just hundreds and hundreds of views on that. And then kind of on the school front, I'll, I'll end with, we just recently did a community thank you to the schools. And certainly during this time, there's a lot of people we could thank. Um, but the end of the school year was such a time to just be able to thank the teachers and faculty and staff administration at the schools for everything they've done during this period. And we created that from the community. So it was very specifically from the entire Westboro community. Again, I'm in such a lucky position because all of those videos, we had a lot of video submissions for that coming our way to put together and made a really touching end of year video that I think not only did the schools find um, comforting, but anybody in the community watching it felt really good about what we have here and who we are. And um, and that's some of our, our mission and our goals. So we were really happy to do that. So just, anyway, I just so, want to, once again, I just want to add something to that. You, you know, I think in terms of these shows, right? So obviously, you know, you, you know, Karen, Shelby and I do this. It will, in theory, it's information, but we just have a good time. And we always enjoyed doing the doing the shows and they were monthly, but then we talked about this, this specific issue of responding to COVID because we knew, you know, my clients are like, like her day job clients, you know, that a lot of those folks, they're the ones at risk and they're also the ones the least familiar with other kinds of ways of getting communication other than clicking on the TV. And I think, we, so we decided to do these regular shows to provide updates specifically for them. And I think it's been very valuable for, for a lot of people for these last couple of months. But I think one of, one of the things that Shelby would, would tell, talk about when we'd be getting together once a week was how amazed she was about the number of other people who were watching the, sh the shows, right? And who were saying, this is really important. And hopefully even these little, you know, dinky shows have been, have been a, a window through which people would start, you know, start realizing how much of this is important, and and even in that, even in the COVID, in the post-COVID world, as we start unwinding a little bit, that that you know certainly it's going to remain really important for seniors because they're many of them are going to stay really nervous about going out, but still for a lot of people. So I really want to thank you folks for stepping up. It was wonderful on great. behalf of all and us old old old. People. Great. Well, I would say that that was another thing we've done this show every single week. You guys have done it for weeks now, and providing really good important information to people. Um, and so that's another thing that we, we've we always had the show, but to switch it and be nimble enough and flexible enough and have Aiden helping out to to turn it into something that is really watchable and interesting and, and people can uh, get information from. Here's my shameless plug for the show. Well, there you go. <laughs> that, was, that was a gift, a but, gift from Frank and Mary. By the way, Arthur, I did wear my Frank and Mary mask throughout town meeting and I got a lot of questions and comments. A lot of questions. And to your point, a lot of folks are like, oh, yeah, Frank and Mary, that's that show. So yeah. Um, yeah, we were thinking of donating some to the senior center and just say, you know, they should sell them and just proceeds to the senior center or something, because yeah. they really do epitomize Frank and Mary during this age. You yeah. know, so. Yeah. So anyway, thanks for that. I'll, I'll mention that to Brenda Costa, my 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 I always in theory, a paralegal, but the person who does everything right. keep, keeps me alive about that. Thank you. And she helped so design I those. I know that we're going to kind of wrap up uh, today's session. Um, Karen, I'm not sure if we're going to let you off in just two sessions now that I'm thinking two, two segments, <laughs> if you will. So, so on our next show, we'll talk further about kind of what is the future. You know, some people are cutting the cord on cable, and yet we're having this whole conversation about how important lo uh, local access uh, television is. And Arthur and I have talked about continuing, you know, well past COVID of doing these weekly shows because we feel it's so important um, as a way to get information out that is um, nonpartisan, non-politicized and informative. And um, and so uh, we'll have you on the next show. And, and uh, with that, Arthur, I'll have you wrap it up for us. Just a thank you once again. Just a thank you, Karen, for all of this, and thank you to our wonderful, our, our wonderful producer, uh, Aiden, Oregon, uh, and thanks again, Shelby, for for doing all of these and for setting all these up and finding all the great guests, folks. We hope you found this informative. This really is a big, big community resource. We want you to learn more about it. So we hope you'll tune in uh, next week to the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro, the COVID nineteen edition. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Bye. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Bye-bye.